jurisprudence produces knowledge in different ways, obviously. There's one particular subject in terms of art development where contemporary dance is very important, especially since the early 90s till now, the last 20 years, meaning that uh, contemporary dance has been the major platform for cross-disciplinarity in the arts in, on stage uh, in general uh, on the last two decades. Because we have such a, a free uh, and open frame, since we don't have such a long history behind us, we are very prone and we risk and choreographers invite a lot of different artists to work on their pieces. So contemporary dance became a place, a playground for tryouts, for experience and for uh, places where architecture mixed with text, with movement, with lights, with ideas, with uh, philosophy, with all kind of uh, inputs uh, that, that can create a, a piece of work. So in that sense, uh, some of the major developments in the in the performing arts in the last two decades, they happen through contemporary dance and in the field of contemporary dance and what I would call our own choreographic culture because, I mean, I'm very proud to be a, a choreographer and a contemporary choreographer and we've been always very generous to other art forms. Preparate is a, is a very interesting situation because, first of all, this is a homage uh, and, and a tribute to John Cage, coming from a choreographer, and I think many choreographers would feel like me. Um, I think uh, uh, Cage, through his relationship with uh, with uh, Cunningham and music, became somehow aware of um, of this whole idea of, of, of movement and how movement relates to, to dance, for instance, and to body, and the aleatory. So somehow dance preparata relates to, to the audience the same way probably a Cunningham piece would relate to the music of Cage. And just surprisingly, uh, uh, sometimes innocent, sometimes uh, uh, prepared, sometimes strange, but always there. So. On the other hand, I think what is interesting is that this woman, when she is dancing, and this man, when he's playing, they are one. They are not just uh, dance and music. They are one form of uh, perception that we don't know exactly what it is because both languages are abstract and extremely powerful. Both music and dance, they, they breed from the same source of uh, inner in a sensations that we cannot verbalize, that we cannot express with words. Sometimes it's not even cognitive, it's precognitive. Movement, we start to move before we start to talk. We start to listen to music and, 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 and mumble before we start to talk. So these two forms, they are very archaic, not only in, 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 in the history of, of mankind or civilization, but also in, 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 the, in the genetic level in terms of our own how we develop as human beings from children. So somehow there's something very special when a pure dance piece with music uh, is presented to the audience because it relates not through the uh, mind but relates through like a sixth sense from body to body. Somehow it's a, a, it's a non-verbal form of communication and that is fascinating because the body does not lie. The body cannot lie. The, the way I'm sitting here talking to you tells if I would be with my arms crossed, with my neck behind, I would be maybe doubtful if I would have my, my body back. But if I'm here talking to you in this way, my body translates to some, in some way something that is deep and that the audience never recognizes cognitively, or a person, when we communicate, uh, uh, never recognizes cognitively, but in a way it's there in some kind of emotional intelligence. And that's what's missing when you speak on the, on the uh, mobile telephone with someone. 
Uh, th this doesn't exist. No matter how sophisticated is the tool, uh, it's still an awkward tool. It's not a good tool. There's nothing like you sit on a chair, someone else sits in a chair in front of you, now let's talk to each other. This is how, and I think this is the kind of communication that exists on, on live art, on, on stage, in theater, in dance. It's, it's really fantastic.